The Great Search brought to you by Adafruit and DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. This is the weekly segment where Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you, yes you, find the things you're looking at and for on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week in the Great Search? You would never guess it, but this one has to do with a part that I can't get anymore. I bet. With a part shortage. I bet it has something to do with parts. Oh, good guess. <laughs> uh, it does. Uh, so this week... Um, we are, you know, what's interesting is half the time you can tell I do a part shortage because I'm like, hey, I'm designing a new thing and I got to spec a part. And the other half is I'm told by the fabrication team at Adafruit, they're like, hey, like we can't get this. And the purchasing team says, yeah. this part went end of line. We can't get anymore. Um, we need your help to find an alternative uh, so we can keep production going. So this week, um, the part that I was told is no longer available um, because, again, not only is it hard to get some parts, but parts that are available are going end of line much faster, uh, end of life, and are, are you know, no, um, uh, they're not, you know, not, uh, non-cancelable, non-returnable, uh, which means they're kind of nearing the end of, of their functionality life. And so, you know, finding a good alternative for um, the, this part, the fan 5333, even though I, there's a last time buy, I haven't learned my lesson. It used to be last time buy meant you could actually last time buy does not mean that anymore. It means like it's over. Good luck. Maybe we'll send it to you to some in two years. Uh, so this um, so this week we're going to let's go to the computer, and I'll show the part that I am getting. So the part that we're gonna get is the uh, fan five three 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 B, and I love this part to be honest. It was a um, high current one point five amp internal switch, fast one point five megahertz switching frequency. Uh, super small, inexpensive, SOT 235 boost converter for LEDs. And what's cool about this is that it was a constant current LED driver, which means that, you know, if you're dealing with backlights, so oftentimes, you know, you get a TFT, anything that's kind of big like this, um, like anything that's over like three inch TFTs, the backlights are often in parallel. So let's look at the backlight diagram. Hold on. Okay. So this is the uh, display, and there's the pinout. And then when you look at the backlight, it's like, bam. You have six or seven LEDs in a row. You want to drive them to 20 milliamps, but you have to, the, the V forward for the LEDs is 22 volts. And this is not uncommon. Most large displays require a boost converter to drive um, the LED backlight. And the V forward, of course, is dependent on, you know, if you have like one LED, you know, you can use a resistor. You don't have to do constant current because it's like, ah, it's three, it's 3.4. It's, it's, you know, somewhere around three-ish volts. But when you have a bunch in a row and there's variations in the backlight design and variations in temperature and, you know, whatever, how bright you want to run it, um, that VF is, it's, it says 21.7, but that's not guaranteed. It can really vary from 20 to 24. So having something that's constant current, you said it, look, I just want 20 milliamps and you, you boost it as high as possible to get to that voltage. Um, that's what you want a constant current driver for. And that's what the fan 5333B did wonderfully. I loved it. So up to 30 volts, um, it again did, you know, 1.5 amps because let's say, uh, you had you know 24 volts output divided by 3.3 volts input, so it's a seven seven and a half times multiply, and then let's say you had a 0 0.5 sorry 0 0.05 um, amp output, uh, so you need at least you know uh, 400 milliamps 0.4 amp current switch. But honestly, I would really double it. You really want you know at least 750 amp milliamp internal switch current so you don't overload it and also um you know if you need a little bit more like 75 milliamps you can do it so this was a really great driver which is why it's so tragic uh that it's not available so let's look at what what it used to be here we go last time by this is it end of line so let's find an alternative and um I will say it's a little challenging to find a perfect alternative, but I'll do the best I can. And uh, one thing, another thing is the price was really nice. These are about 60 cents a piece, uh, which is like really sweet. So you do need an inductor, you need a diode, and these also needed a protection diode. They would actually, 
Um, they need a Xenodire to avoid going over voltage, but uh, you know those were cheap. Those were ten cents. So not bad. So let's find something similar again from three to five volt input, 20, 24 volt output, uh, switch current of at least a half an amp, um, but you know as much as possible. High speed, PWMable, and ideally the same size and pinout. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be nice? So let's find something. It's a uh, DC-DC regulator. It's a step up with an internal switch and one output. I'm not gonna set the voltage input min max because of course it could always be a wider range, um, but also I'm, I'm a little flexible on it. Voltage output again, I don't need up to 30. I just need around like 20. Current output, I'll just see what's available. Um, I do want surface mount and I don't pick the package case because remember there's SOT 23.5 and there's TSOT 23.5 and both will work. So I don't set this and I set this on the next page. So, all right, here we are. So let's look for only active items because again, we don't want to, we don't want to find things we've already found. Um, next up, we do want to set the package. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select, uh, SOT 23 thin or TSOT, uh, which is also the same as uh, SC74A. I'm like pretty sure that was the one. It's not the same as 70. Yeah, 70 5 is, is the smaller version. Um, 74A is the same as, as TSOT 235. I will say, by the way, because, you know, obviously I, I do these, you know, earlier because I, I get it all ready to make sure I can actually find something. Um, there is a lot more options if I'm willing to go to the TSOT 6. So I will say, you know, if there might be some situation where I'm like, oh, if I have to update the design, um, there might be, be there, there'll be more and better options if I'm willing to go to a six pin SOT 236. But again, I'm looking for something that could swap into my current designs to, to just let me stretch out the PCBs I have now. Uh, so let's look here. And this is already only 35 options. Um, so I'm also gonna look for stuff that's uh, in stock right now. I will say that there's a couple options that are not in stock, but if it's not in stock, a lot of them aren't coming into stock until 2023. Um, and then the voltage output, I will say, you know, I didn't wanna limit this because um, some of them, they were like voltage output, but they could actually go a little bit higher than 20 or 21 volts. Also the current output, because some of these are switch current and some of these are non-switch, I was like, you know what, let me, I'll just look at the data sheet for each and see what's up. Uh, next up, search by price, because I want to kind of get something close. So the first thing I'm going to look at is this uh, like ZXLD. With boost converters, you really do have to just look at the, um, the design. So the only thing is that this is actually kind of weird. It is a backlight driver, but it's actually like a, a cell. Um, it's for a photo cell, um, a photovoltaic cell um, input to an LED. So it's 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 a funky, useful thing, but it's not what I want. It's not um, it's not the kind of boost converter I'm looking for. Next up is the NCP five zero seven. Also a pretty good price, about the same. Looking at this, um, okay, so this, this looks promising because this is, you can tell it's actually a boost converter and it's meant for a string of LEDs. Uh, it can do up to 20, 20, 22 volt output, which is a, a little bit low, but I think it might work fine for most of my designs because you remember it said about 20, 22 volt output. Um, let's look at the current. It can do... 1.0 watts, which is, if you divide by 22 volts, about 45 milliamps. So, you know, yeah, not too bad. Um, the only thing is I looked at this one and I looked at this and you see it's uh, switch, ground, feedback, and this one is feedback, ground, and so it's, um, it's not the same. It's the same package, but it's not the same pinout. So... Uh, you know, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to say no to it because I could reroute some traces. I could still use the same pick-and-place program, the same stencil, but um, not I'm not loving this one so far. All right, next up is the CAT4139. Uh, this one, 
Uh, looking at so switch ground feedback, and this one does switch ground feedback shut down. VA and so this has the right pinout, which is good. It has the right package, which is good. Uh, it also says can drive lines up to 22 volts. Um, but when I looked, yeah, it liked to have 22 volts, but it was actually willing to do a little bit above, I think. I remember I saw it was like, oh, you know, you could go to, there was an old over voltage detection at 23 or 24. So um, depending on the displays, it might actually be okay. And then um, the switch current is 750 milliamps. Remember, you've got like, that's the multiplied current from the input. So that would mean, um, let's see, 22 volts divided by 3.3, .3, uh, which is like seven times. So 750 divided by seven. So max, 100 milliamp output, but really I'd say 50 milliamps is probably good. That means um, two parallel strands, which for that 4.3 inch display, it only had one strand, but the seven inch displays we have have two strands in a row. So that's good to know. Um, and it has uh, some open LED detection um, and it has PWM control. So the only thing that was a little odd is it wanted a little bit of like, it had a resistor here uh, to protect the feedback pin, but it wasn't clear if you actually needed it. Um, the feedback resistance is a little different. So this uses a 0.3 volts feedback and I believe this one uses, oh no, it also has about 0.3 volts. So that's good. The feedback resistor is the same. And you can PWM the, the input, uh, no more than two kilohertz, but it is PWM, which is what I would do for our design. So I would use that for the, that's how you PWM the um, LEDs. You actually just like turn on and off the boost converter really, really fast. So will this work? I mean, it doesn't go as high. It's not 30 volts, it's 22 volts. That said, I think given the small number of items in stock, like, after this, the price gets really high, and like this boost converter is only 350 milliamp switch, and then it's like, okay, now the, the pricing gets quite high. One chip that did look like it was a very good option if, if the CAT4139 doesn't work is the MCP1664. Um, this goes up to 36 volts, and a... Uh, 1.8 amp switch so it's it's a really good output and i think i think the yeah switch ground feedback switch ground feedback so this is also pin compatible the only thing is it's twice the price but uh it will definitely do the job it does that voltage or higher it does that much current or higher so it's, it's kind of an upgrade so we've got two options i'm probably going to um try this one for some of the smaller displays, like again, the ones that only have one strand. But if I need, you know, two strand or three strand, something that really wants to push a lot of current or uh, high voltage across the display, I can always go to the, uh, the MCP, sorry, the MCP1664. So two options, um, but I'm gonna probably start with this one, the CAT, what, oh, we'll go back here, the CAT, 4139 and there's a couple thousand stocks so I can pick these up and then um, you know see how they uh, how they do in the design and of course you know I'll know immediately if um, it's not lighting up the backlight or if there's any issues so I'll probably pick some up hot air them onto um, the backlight controller for some of my displays and just like do they light up bright enough if so um, we'll be able to use that and I'll just check each display one after the other if it doesn't work with this one I'll try the MCP as well all right, that's a great search.